Hello, dear listener. Um, some of you may have listened to our previous talk on the power of the holy name of Mary and of the Rosary. This is actually the second part of that talk. Uh, the power of the holy name of Mary has uh, been documented by some of the saints. The great name of Mary, which was given to the Divine Mother, did not come from her or from her parents, nor was it given to her by the mind or will of man, as is the case with all the other names that are in, imposed in this world. But it came from heaven and was given her by divine ordinance. This is attested to by St. Jerome, St. Epiphanius, St. Antoni Antoni Antonius, and others. The name of Mary came from the treasury of the divinity. We saw this in the first part of this talk uh, from Mystical City of God. The Blessed Trinity determined her name even before she was born because God was to dwell in her. God cannot dwell in just any place. So, says St. Peter of Damien, Ah yes, O Mary, it was from that treasury that thy high and admirable name came forth. For the most blessed trinity, says Richard of St. Lawrence, bestowed on thee a name above every other name after that of thy son, and ennobled it with much, with such majesty and power that he willed that all heaven and earth and hell and unholy hearing it should fall down and venerate it. But I will give the author's own words. The whole, tri the whole trinity, O Mary, gave thee a name after that of thy son. Above every other name, that in thy name every knee should bow of heaven, of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. But amongst the other privileges of the name of Mary, and which were given to it by God, we will now examine that of the peculiar sweetness found in it by the servants of this most holy lady during life and, on, and in earth and in death and in the first place speaking of the course of of her life the holy anchorite honorius used to say that this name of mary is filled with every sweetness and divine savor so much so that the glorious saint anthony of padua found the same sweetness in the name of mary that St. Bernard found the doubt of Jesus. Name of Jesus, exclaimed one. Oh, name of Mary, replied the other. Joy in the heart, honey in the mouth, melody to the ear of the devout, of her devout clients. It is narrated in the life of Venerable Father Juvenal of Ancina, Bishop of San Luzo, that in pronouncing the name of Mary, he tasted so great and sensible a sweetness that after doing so, he licked his lips. Wow. We read, we read also that a lady at Cologne told the bishop, Marcellus, that as often as she uttered the name of Mary, she experienced a taste far sweeter than honey. The bishop intimated her and experienced the same, imitated her and experienced the same thing. We gather from sacred canticles that on the assumption of her blessed lady, the angel asked her her name three times. Who is she that went up by the desert as a pillar of smoke? Again, who is she that cometh forth as the morning rising? This we always say in Katika. And again, who is this that cometh from the desert flowing with the lights? And why, say Richard of St. Lawrence, do the angels so often ask this the name of their queen? He answers that it was so sweet even to the angels to hear it pronounced that they desired to hear her and to hear that sweet name in reply. But here, I do not intend to speak of that sensible sweetness, for it is not granted to everybody. I speak of that salutary sweetness of consolation, of love, of joy, of confidence, of strength, which is with the name of Mary ordinarily brings to those who pronounce it with devotion. The name of somebody is not just a mere calling, it's, a, it's an address, it's a spiritual address. Think of the countless beings in heaven. When you say Jesus, of all of them there, only one person um, responds. He knows that he's the one you are calling. It also defines a mission, the mission of an individual. For instance, Jesus pronounced in Aramaic, means, it's pronounced Yeshua, just like Joshua, it means Savior. 
So the name of somebody defines a mission. It is not chosen carelessly or without consideration to what the person um, is going to carry out. The Abbot Franconi, speaking on this subject, says there is no other name after that of the Son in heaven and on earth, whence pious mind derives so much grace, hope, and sweetness. And the most sacred name of Jesus, after the most sacred name of Jesus, the name of Mary is so rich in every good thing that on earth and in heaven there is no other from which the vow soul receives so much grace, hope, and sweetness. For, he continues, there is something so admirable, sweet, and divine in the name of Mary that when it meets with friendly hearts, it breathes into them an odor of delightful sweetness. And he adds, in conclusion, that the wonder of this great name is that if heard by the lovers of Mary a thousand times, it always, it always, it had again with renewed pleasure. For, for they always experience the same sweetness each time it is pronounced. According to the blessed Henry Suso, that when he named Mary, he felt himself so excited, so to confidence, and inflamed with such love and joy, that between the tears and joy with which he pronounced the beloved name, he desired that his heart might have his breast. For he declared that this most sweet name was like a honeycomb dissolving in the most recess of the soul. And then he would exclaim, O oh, most sweet name, O oh, Mary, what must, what, what must thou thyself be, since thy name is thus amiable and gracious? The enamored Saint Bernard, raising his heart to the good mother, says with tenderness, O oh, great, O oh, pious, O oh, thou who art worthy of all praise, O oh, most holy Virgin Mary, thy name is so sweet and amiable that it cannot be pronounced without inflaming those who do so with love towards thee and God. It only need occur to the thought of thy lovers to move them to love thee more and to console thee. Thou cannot be named without inflaming. Thou cannot be thought of by those who love thee without filling their minds with joy. And if riches comfort the poor because they relieve them in their distress, oh, how much more does thy name, O Mary, says Richard of St. Lawrence, comfort us than any earthly riches. It comforts us in the anguish of this life. I name of Mary is far better than riches because it can better relieve poverty. In fine, thy name of Mother of God is filled with divine graces and blessings, according to St. Methodius. So much so that thy name, O Mary, cannot be pronounced without bringing some grace to him who does so devoutly. Those are the words of St. Bonaventure. That thy name, O Mary, cannot be pronounced without bringing some grace to him who does so devoutly. The blessed Raymond Giordano also says that however hardened and diffident the heart may be, the name of this most blessed virgin has such efficacy that if it is only pronounced, that heart will be wonderfully softened. I will, however, uh, give his own words, the, which is, he says this, the power of thy most holy name O oh, ever blessed Virgin Mary is such that it softens the hardness of the human heart in a wonderful manner. He then tells us that it is she who leads sinners to the hope of pardon and grace. By thee does the sinner recover the hope of forgiveness and of grace. Thy most sweet name, O Mary, according to St. Ambrose, is a precious ointment which brings forth the odor of divine grace. The same then prays to the Divine Mother, saying, Let this ointment of salvation enter the innermost recesses of our soul. That is, grant, O Lady, that we may often remember to name thee with love and confidence. For this practice either shows the possession of divine grace, or else is a pledge that we shall soon recover it. And truly it is so, O Mary, for the remembrance of thy name comforts the afflicted, recalls those who have erred to the way of salvation, and encourages sinners that they may not abandon themselves to despair. It is thus that Ludolf of Saxony addresses her. 
Father Abba says that as Jesus Christ by his five wounds gave a remedy for the evils of the world, so does also does Mary by her most holy name, which is composed of five letters in Latin, because her name is Maria, it is five letters actually, by her most holy name, which is composed of five letters, daily bring pardon to sinners. For this reason, is the holy name of Mary likened in the sacred canticles to oil. The name of Mary is as oil poured out. Those of you who are consecrated totally to Jesus Christ through Mary will remember the daily office of Immaculate Conception. The closure of that office around 9 p.m. And we always say that the name of Mary is as oil poured out. Your servant, thy servants have loved thee exceedingly. On this verse, Blessed Allah says that the glory of her name is compared to oil poured out because oil heals the sick, sends out a sweet odor, and nourishes flames. Thus also does the name of Mary heal sinners, rejoice us, and inflame them with divine love. Hence, Richard of St. Lawrence encourages sinners to have recourse to this great name because it alone will suffice to cure them of all their evils. And there is no disorder, however malignant, that does not immediately yield to the power of the name of Mary. On the other hand, Thomas Akempis affirms that the devils fear the Queen of Heaven to such a degree that only on hearing her great name pronounced, they fly from him who does so as from a burning fire. The Blessed Virgin has said revealed to St. Bridget that there is not a sinner, there is not on earth a sinner, however devoid he may be, of the love of God, from whom the devil is not obliged immediately to flee, if he invokes her holy name with a determination to repent. On another occasion, she repeated the same thing to the saint, saying that all the devils venerate and fear her name to such a degree that on hearing it, they immediately lose in the claws with which they hold the soul captive. A blessed lady told St. Bridget that in the same way, as the rebel angels fly from sinners who invoke the name of Mary, so also do the good angels approach nearer to just souls who pronounce her name with devotion. St. Germanus declares that as breathing is a sign of life, so also is the frequent pronunciation of the name of Mary a sign either of the life of divine grace or that it will soon come for this powerful name has in it the virtue of obtaining help and life for him who invokes it devoutly. And so our lady says, as breathing is a sign of life in the body, so is the frequent repetition of thy most holy name, O Virgin, by thy servants. Not only a sign of life and of strength, but also it procures and conciliates both. And fine, this admirable name of our sovereign lady, says Richard of St. Lawrence, is like a fortified tower in which if a sinner takes refuge, it will be delivered from death, for it defends and saves even the most abandoned. But it is a tower of strength which not only delivers sinners from chastisement, but also defends the just from the assaults of hell. Thus, the same Richard says that after the name of Jesus, there is no other in which men find so powerful assistance and salvation as in the great name of Mary. He says there is no such powerful help in any name, nor is there any other name given to men after that of Jesus from which so much salvation is brought forth upon men as from the name of Mary. Moreover, it is well known and is daily experienced by the clients of Mary that a powerful name gives the particular strength necessary to overcome temptations against purity. You know that impurity, sins of the flesh, fornication, adultery, all manner of sins of the flesh are so rampant today. The same author in his commentary on the words of St. Luke in the Bible, where he says, and the virgin's name was Mary, remarks that these two words, Mary and Virgin, are joined together by the evangelist to denote that the name of this most pure virgin should always be coupled with the virtue of chastity. Hence, Peter, St. Peter Chrysologus says that the name of Mary is an indication of chastity, meaning that when we doubt as to whether we have consented to thoughts, that is thoughts against holy purity, against this virtue, if we remember having invoked the name of Mary 
we have a certain proof that we have not seen. Let us therefore always take advantage of the beautiful advice given us by St. Bernard in these words. In dangers, in perplexities, and in doubtful cases, think of Mary, call on Mary, let her not leave thy lips, let her not depart from thy heart. In every danger of forfeiting divine grace, we should think of Mary and invoke her name together with that of Jesus. For these two names always go together. Oh then, never let us from in these two most sweet names to leave our hearts or be off our lips, for they will give us strength not only not to yield, but to conquer all temptations. Uh, some of the prophecies we've been getting in recent time, talking about the end time events. Uh, Blessed Mother was telling this year, pray that during the days of the Antichrist, pray that my name Mary will not be taken away from your mouth. He says, I'm announced at the beginning as the woman who crushes the head of the serpent in Genesis 3.15. And in the end, the book of Revelation, I am presented as the woman who does battle with the huge red dragon. Consoling indeed are the promises of her made by Jesus Christ to those who have devotion to the name of Mary. For one day, in the hearing of St. Bridget, he promised his most holy mother that he will grant three special graces to those who invoke that holy name with confidence. First, that he will grant them perfect sorrow for their sins. Secondly, that their crimes will be atoned for. And thirdly, that he will give them strength to attain perfection and at length the glory of paradise. Dear listener, wouldn't you like to attain perfection in this life? And then our divine Savior added, for thy words, O oh my mother, are so sweet and agreeable to me that I cannot deny what thou askest. Remember what we said in one of, some other video about the advocate who cannot be refused by her son. Saint Ephraim goes on so far as to say that the name of Mary is the key to the key of the gates of heaven in the hands of those who devoutly invoke it, and thus it is not without reason. That St. Bonaventure says that Mary is the salvation of all those who call upon her. For he addresses her, saying, O salvation of those who invoke the meaning, that to obtain eternal salvation and invoke her name as synonymous. And Richard of St. Lawrence affirms that the devout invocation of this sweet and holy name leads to the acquisition of superabundant graces in this life and a very high degree of glory in the next. Remember the part one of this talk. The promises made by the Blessed Trinity concerning this name, uh, as recorded, reported by Mary of Agrida, that they will be filled with superabundant graces, and that this name will be, will be the light that guides them to heaven. If there are no brethren, concludes Thomas Akempis, you desire consolation in every labor, have recourse to Mary, invoke the name of Mary, honor Mary, recommend yourselves to Mary, rejoice with Mary, weep with Mary, pray with Mary, walk with Mary, seek Jesus with Mary. You know, when Jesus, the infant Jesus was missing in the temple at the age of 12, St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother uh, sought Jesus for three days and finally found her in the temple. Now you have been told to seek Jesus with Mary. You find desire to live and die with Jesus and Mary. By acting thus, you will always advance in the ways of God, for Mary will, all, will most willingly pray for you. And the Son will most certainly grant all that his mother asks. Thus, we see that the most holy name of Mary is sweet indeed to her clients during life, on account of the very great graces that she obtains for them. But sweeter still will it be for them in death, on account of the tranquil and holy end that will ensure them. Father Ceteros Caputo of the Society of Jesus uh, gives us a very good example of this. He exhorts all who, those who are seen the dying frequently to pronounce the name of Mary for this uh, name of life and hope when repeated at the hour of death suffices to put the devils to flight and to comfort such persons in their sufferings. The invocation of the sacred names of Jesus and Mary according to Thomas Akempis is a short prayer which is so sweet to the mind and as powerful uh, to protect those who use it against the enemies of their salvation as it is easy to remember. Blessed is the man who loves thy name, O Mary, exclaims, exclaims St. Bonaventure. Yes, truly blessed, you see, uh, did, the, did the angel uh, not, uh, did she herself not say, all generations shall call me blessed in the 
Bible. He has truly blessed to see who loves thy sweet name, O Mother of God, for he continues. Thy name is so glorious and admirable that no one who remembers it has any fears at the hour of death. Such is his power that none of those who invoke it at the hour of death fear the assaults of their enemies. Oh, that we may end our lives as did the Capuchin Father for Gentiles of Ascoli, who expired in singing, O Mary, O Mary, O most beautiful of creatures, let us depart together, or according to the honors of the order, like Blessed the Cistician, who expired in the very moment that he was pronouncing the most sweet name of Mary. Let us then, O devout listener, beg God to grant us that that at the death, that at death the, name, the name of Mary may be the last word on our lips. This was the prayer of Saint Germanus. May the last movement of my tongue be to pronounce the name of the Mother of God. O oh, sweet, O oh, safe is the death which is accompanied and protected by soul saving a name. For God only grants the grace of invoking it to those whom he is about to save. O oh, my sweet lady and mother, I love thee much. And because I love thee, I also love thy holy name. I purpose and hope with our assistance always to invoke it during life and our death. And to conclude with the tender prayer of St. Bonaventure, I ask thee, O oh, Mary, for the grace, for the glory of thy name to come and meet my soul when it is departing from this world and to take it in his arms. This day not, O Mary, the saint continues, to come then and comfort me with thy presence. Be thyself my soul's ladder and way to heaven. Do thou thyself obtain for it the grace of forgiveness and eternal repose. He then concludes saying, O Mary, our advocate, it is for thee to defend thy clients and to undertake their cause before the tribunal of Jesus Christ. That is the eternal Supreme Court. St. Camillus the Chelelis urged members of his community to remind the dying of whom to utter, utter the holy name of Jesus and Mary. Such was his custom when assisting people in their last hour. When he himself came to die, he gave an edifying example of confidence in the holy names. His biographer relates that when death was approaching, the saint invoked the, invoked the sweet names of Jesus and Mary with so tender devotion that all present were inflamed with love for the sacred names. With his eyes fixed on the images of Jesus and Mary and his arms crossed in his heart, an expression of heavenly peace rested on his face when his soul took his flight and his last words were the sacred names of Jesus and Mary. Dear listener, we have come to the end of this second part of the power in the holy name of Mary. Um, you have seen that these are not names chosen by human beings. They were chosen by, this name of Our Lady was chosen by God himself. Uh, we end with the two invocations during the divine praises before the blessed sacrament among the many praises the priest chants is one of them is blessed be the name of mary virgin and mother and for those who are consecrated to jesus through mary a part of the daily office as we said earlier we always say thy name O mary is as oil poured out thy servants have loved thee exceedingly next time when you pronounce this name Say it with devotion, say it with veneration, say it with joy. When you feel or suspect diabolical attack, the presence of the devil or the demons around you, call upon this name. Why? It has been said many times, the devil fears to be humbled by that woman more than he even fears to be humbled by Jesus. The reason is simple. As a man, if you have a quarrel with a woman and a judge comes and says you are guilty, and ask you to make a choice to be slapped by the woman or um, to be slapped by another man. And we've asked this question in many classes and many, people, many men told us you know, they would prefer to be slapped by their fellow man. I said, why? The slap of the man will carry greater blow and power, greater firepower. He said, yes, but that they cannot stand the loss of respect and dignity that you know, people will say when they are passing the next day, ah, look at that man that the woman slapped. 
this is exactly why right from the beginning the eternal father told the devil that she will crush thy head she will crush thy head and that's the drama you see in revelation 12 the woman clothed with the sun and then the huge red dragon god bless you